Hi guys. So unfortunately yesterday um, they did not get done with the juror selection process and so I had to go back to the courthouse again today. Um, so I'll find out today if I'm going to be selected to be on this jury. Uh, but I'm really, really sorry I was not um, there in class today. I did have a chance to look at your um, videos that you guys turned in yesterday and those were so cute and clever and I, it made me laugh. So thank you because it was a long day uh, today. So um, I'm going to tell you guys what you guys are doing today. Uh, you have done an activity like this uh, prior to this. And then of course, when I, hopefully when I get back on Wednesday, like let's cross our fingers, I'm back on Wednesday. Um, I can kind of go over what you guys learned through this lockbox. I'll kind of tell you a little bit. So you have some background knowledge on what's going on here. But anyway, so you are doing a digital lockbox over the robber barons or captains of industry, uh, during the industrial revolution. Uh, some things to remember as you complete this lockbox. Okay. Um, when you click on the website, it will bring you to this page here. All right. Um, and you can see like it's brought you back in time. Um, and you're trying to get through the harsh working conditions created by the robber barons of the time period. In order to go home, you must meet the four maestro industrial tycoons of the time and bust their trust by learning their keys to success to break them down. But you have to hurry. Failure to enter their monopoly could impact your future. So basically, um, you have these four men who were very prominent during the age um, of revolution. And they're some of the most wealthiest men of all time because this is before monopolies were illegal. Um, and so you have the wealthiest man in American history of all time adjusted for inflation. Um, this is John D. Rockefeller. This is the wealthiest man in United States history. Um, you also have Andrew Carnegie, J.P. Morgan, which you may have heard of that business before, and Cornelius Vanderbilt. Uh, if you've heard of Vanderbilt College, you may have heard of him before. So you guys are completing this lockbox over these guys today. Um, remember, your answers go on this section over here where my mouse is. You have to put your name, your hour, your teacher, and then here are your, let your locks. Um, so remember this is, you have to read with the letter locks at like 10 letter word lock, all caps. When I type in something and like say it's wrong, then look, it gives me a hint. Better go try again and figure out how he made his money. So I know I need to go look at, uh, lock number one and figure out how he made his money. And that's the answer to my lock. So it's a 10 letter word. So if you do that on other ones, they may or may not have hints depending on the, uh, level it is like that one's a little easier. Um, let's see this one. Take a close, closer look at the correct answers, etc. So you can do this timer if you want to, to see how long it takes you. It's up to you. But when you actually have correct things in these um, blanks, you don't want to exit out of this. So when I go to open up lock one and two, I want to do um, right click there, uh, open link and new tab. Okay, so now I have lock number one and two open in this tab and then I can flip back and forth. You do not want to leave um, this page here because then you'll lose all your answers and you'll just be really frustrated. So the first person you're going to learn about is John D. Rockefeller and he is very associated with the oil industry. He made so much money at the oil industry. You can see he's the richest man. Um, he accumulated a net worth of $340 billion and that's four times the amount of money as Bill Gates. Like, can you imagine like this man was so wealthy. Have you ever heard of Rockefeller Center in New York City? Yeah, built after him. Um, uh, the Christmas tree goes there like in front of it in New York City as well too. So you can see there's two locks here. Click the image here to, um, to find clue one. Hint, consider how his money is made, remember. And then this is what you do to um, help with clue two. Clue two, this is the information. You click on it, it's going to take you to the information. You uh, use this quiz, clue two, to get the correct answers. Okay. When you guys do these quizzes, pay attention to the correct answers. They are going to have letters or numbers by them. And then like, let's go look at lock number two. Oh, it's a five letter lock. What do you know? There's five questions. So please pay attention to the correct answers as you go through and take those quizzes. So then you are able to get the locks as you go through. So that's lock one and two. Uh, Rockefeller, the richest man in U.S. history because he was involved in the oil business. So moving on to lock three and four is Andrew Carnegie. So you can see like uh, lock three, we have another quiz. You're going to use this information here. I know that's not showing up right now, but if you click it, it'll take you to the website and it will show up. Um, you can also use 
uh, this little slide here as well too. But um, you analyze the cartoon, you pick a five letter term anyway. So this is all gonna help you. This video, don't forget that it's down here. It will help you answer um, some of the questions in this lock over here. So you will need that video at some point. You will need to watch it. So please make sure you guys have headphones readily available. Uh, Andrew Carnegie was um, the one that was, made all of his money in the steel business. And so um, if you've ever heard of the Pittsburgh Steelers, you wondered where that name came from. That's because Carnegie Steel Company was created in Pittsburgh. And you can see the logo back there. And so he had a net worth of $310 billion. These men were uber rich. That's before we had government regulation on business. So um, lock five and six, Cornelius Vanderbilt in the railroad industry. Um, he was considered one of the first captains. What you're doing here is you have a timeline. Look at your little boxes. They have numbers by them. Hey, okay? your, your lock for this one is a number lock. All right, so you're going to watch the video, and then you're going to put in the events in order um, according to uh, Rockefeller, or excuse me, not Rockefeller, according to what the video says, you put the events in order of how they happened to his life. He was worth $100 million. You're going to click that image to find the next clue for lock six. When you click that image, you have a jigsaw to do. So within that jigsaw, it asks you a question, and that's uh, the answer to the lock. Finally, seven and eight. You have J.P. Morgan, um, and you can see he made his money through banking. Um, his net worth was $41.5 So you can kind of see Carnegie and Rockefeller were just like on their own, like, pedestal up there with like hundreds of millions of dollars. Uh, while these guys still uber rich, um, but still well known during the time. Um, you can see he helped organize U.S. Steel, General Electric, and other major corporations. He's also who they built the Monopoly guy off of. As if you see a little picture here of J.P. Morgan, you can see he has that Monopoly man mustache. So um, you can see lock number seven, it gives you a hint here. And lock number eight, you're gonna use this map um, and find the word that's in all four locations as you look through this map. So hopefully that's clear on everything and you have a little bit of background um, on all this. Something that you guys should, should consider as you go through this is like, were these guys good guys or bad guys? Like what should people consider them? And we're gonna talk more about that on Wednesday and also like, how do you form monopolies? Like you maybe have heard of the game Monopoly and that's when you try to buy up everything. That's essentially what they kind of did. And I'm gonna go through that and in way more information on Wednesday. Hopefully I'm there. But if you have any questions, you can email me. I'll just be sitting in the courthouse. Um, but I will try to do the best as I can. You can always go ask Mr. Unrow um, or Miss Danson as well, too, if you guys have questions on any of this. Um, they have done this before and can probably help you. So I hope you have a wonderful day in class. Hopefully I'll see you on Wednesday. Bye-bye.